The first phase of the strategic Iranian port, which India helped develop, was inaugurated by Iran's President Hassan Rouhani on December 3. The opening of the first phase of Shahid Bahishti port, out of five phases defined for the project, will allow the docking of super-large container ships between 100,000 to 120,000 DWT, dead weight tonnage, and increase India's connectivity with Afghanistan. Increasing port capacity to 8.5 million metric tons of cargo from just 2.5 million tons a year which is equal to that of all the northern ports of the country, the new harbor extension is all set to facilitate the International North-South Transport Corridor, NSTC, to Russia as well. It is expected that $5 billion worth of Afghan trade will be conducted solely through the tripartite Chabahar port, sponsored jointly by India, Iran, and Afghanistan. Once it starts feeding the NSTC, Iran has already completed the road from Chabahar to Zahedan, which in turn will connect with the road from Zaranj to Delrim, two important urban centers in Afghanistan, which India built in 2009. Iran and India signed an agreement worth $2 billion for cooperation in the rail sector, part of the agreement pertains to aim worth $600 million for Iran to purchase locomotives and freight cars from India. This project will come on stream within three years and part of the locomotives will be manufactured in Iran. Two other projects embedded in the $2 billion deal include the development of Chabahar Zahedan Railroad worth $1 billion and rail supply for Iranian projects. India has agreed to build a 500-kilometer railroad from Chabahar to Zahedan. India's state owned Khan will build a rail route at a cost of $1.6 billion as part of the transit corridor to Afghanistan. The deal stipulates the development and operation of two terminals and three berths at the port with cargo handling capacities for 10 years. India joined the Ashgabat Agreement which envisages creation of an international transport and transit corridor, which is already in force among Iran, Oman, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. This agreement will make it possible to enhance connectivity within Eurasian region and synchronize it with other transport corridors within that region including the NSTC. Iran currently faces stringent restrictions on any projects linked to its Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, Chabahar remains an exception, even though sanctions were a hurdle in the past. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tirson has been on the record saying that Washington would not block legitimate business activities with Iran by India as there was no contradiction between U.S. sanctions on Iran and the Chabahar project. French company signed an agreement with Iran companies in July to manufacture 1,000 subway wagons at Iraiko's facilities within three years. Later in December, South Korean Hyundai Rotem signed a contract worth 720 million euros with Iran Railways to produce 450 suburban wagons in Iran. And a few days later, Russia signed a 3 billion euros finance deal with Iran for the joint manufacture of 20,000 freight cars, 1,000 passenger cars, 350 locomotives and rail transportation equipment. Iran has another agreement worth 2.5 billion euros with Russia's TJSC Transmission Holding for the joint production of rolling stock in Iran. China has also played a major role in developing Iran's rail sector, as Iran lies in the heart of the so-called New Silk Road a 3,200-kilometer railroad project that ultimately sees Rumki, the capital of China's western Xinjiang province linked to the Iranian capital Tehran, connecting Kazakhstan. Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan along the way. China signed a contract with Iran in July to finance the electrification of a 926-kilometer railroad from Tehran to the eastern city of Mashhad in Karasan Razavi province with a $1.5 billion loan. As for Gwada Airport, China Overseas Ports Holding Company, Kafk has a 40-year lease and has been building the port infrastructure since 2013. Under the lease agreement, it will retain over 90% of revenue from Wada Ur's marine operations, plus 85% of the revenue from the management of the free zone. It will also benefit from tax exemptions that Pakistan has granted to Chinese companies for projects related to $62 billion China-Pakistan Economic Corridor CPC. Kbek will connect Kashgar in northwestern China with Gwadar through a network of roads, railway lines, 
oil and gas pipelines and a fiber optic cable. Guadalajara's national layout and depth enable the largest ships to dock there. The maximum planned capacity of Chabahar is around 12 million tons per annum while Guadalajara will be able to process about 13 million tons by 2022, making it one of the largest port in South Asia. At any given time, the port can berth two or three large ships with capacity of 50,000 DWT. By 2045, the port will be able to berth 150 ships and cargo up to 400 million tons, and will have multiple logistics services, a huge storage facility and a 9-square-kilometer industrial free trade zone. The Arabian Seaport is located in Pakistan's largest province of Balochistan where militant groups, including Islamic State, and a low-level insurgency remain key security challenges to Quebec. Additionally, the corridor runs through Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, POK, drawing objections from India. Not only in India, activists in the disputed region claim that China's pace of implementing projects will environmentally harm the region. They also believe that these projects will lead to rampant land grabbing and loss of employment opportunities for the locals. South Korea had earlier shown interest, it is now reluctant to invest in these regions of Pakistan. Pakistan's export receipts were 263% less than the import bill in the first six months of the last fiscal year. Pakistan's finance ministry expressed serious concern about the widening trade deficit and pointed out that if growth remains stagnant, it will be a whopping $35 billion by the end of fiscal 2017-18. Pakistan's foreign exchange deposits figure is gradually sinking, which is presently below $20 billion. Pakistan needs to pay back $6 billion for foreign debts servicing by the end of June 2018. To make matters worse for the country, the U.S. government announced it was freezing military aid to Pakistan. Apart from the Chinese frigates and corvettes it currently possesses, Pakistan is in the process of acquiring eight submarines from China. China has begun work on infrastructure required to station nuclear submarines at the Guadalajara port, which is being built and financed by Beijing. Pakistani Navy is constructing a very low-frequency, VLF, station for strategic submarine communications, which is used for shore radio station and provides one-way communication to submarines operating in deep water. The works related to the construction of 205 Antenna Tower Foundation underground VLF building and power station is currently underway. China needs to set up another base in Guadalajara for its warships because Guadalajara is now a civilian port, said analyst Zhu Qinming. Plans call for the Jiwani base to be its second overseas military base a joint naval and air facility for Chinese forces, located a short distance up the coast from the Chinese-built commercial port facility at Guadalajara, Pakistan. This may be the reason behind POTUS Trump's New Year tweet which stunned whole Pakistan. Plans for the base were advanced during a visit to Jawani on December 18 by a group of 16 Chinese People's Liberation Army officers who met with about 10 Pakistani military officers. Jawani is located on a peninsula about 15 miles long on a stretch of land with one small airfield. According to sources, the large naval and air base will require the Pakistani government to relocate scores of residents living in the area. Plans call for their relocation to other areas of Diwani or further inland in Baluchistan province. The Chinese also asked the Pakistanis to undertake a major upgrade of Diwani airport so the facility will be able to handle large Chinese military aircraft. Work on the airport improvements is expected to begin in July. China plans to turn Guadalajara into a megaport for transshipping goods worldwide, along with energy pipelines, roads and rail links connecting to western China. Chinese naval and air forces at nearby Jawani would then provide protection for that base which Pakistani military can't.